All right, welcome back to Newcastle Central. Be making pretty steady progress here on this first of the station buildings. I have got the top of the roof now all finished out. There is a little bit of cleanup work to do, get rid of some of the messy fingerprints, but otherwise all of the glazing is in. Uh, it does kind of set it off a lot more than when it was open. Did also get some of that simulated road work inside the building that's going across those roof beams as well. Uh, a little bit of guttering work, things like that. So there's still some more to do here, but uh, let's go and have a little bit of a look. See how I went through this process, see how I went about doing the top of the roof and that glazing, and see some trends running around as well. Thanks for watching. All right, so this is where we're at with the start of now putting on the glazed section of the roofing. And I had to think a little bit about how I wanted to do this and the best way to approach it. And so what I ended up with is laser cutting uh, the kind of circular pieces and that piece across the top. It's easy to see when you're up close. When you're from a distance it doesn't look that bad, but you can see all the little imperfections when you're right up close. Uh, so laser cut each of those circular pieces and the little piece across the top. And the uh, bottom of the circle is ever so slightly curved so that it was uh, a lot easier to glue it onto the curved uh, roof pieces themselves. And in those side pieces, those kind of diagonal pieces, I think that's a one eighth inch uh, square balsa. Uh, so very soft balsa wood, uh, one eighth inch, or right around three millimeters. And they're then just kind of cut to length. And so when we kind of back up a little bit, you then kind of have that curve being followed as well. reason why these weren't individually laser cut is because they're not perfectly uh, the same length on either side just because of the way um, this actual roofing part itself was then cut and curved. Uh, I think the back side doesn't actually curve as much if we come down there. The side on the right you can see that the roof piece seems to curve a little bit more when I was cutting it. The one on the left is a little bit straighter at least for that first half. And so again, when you look carefully, what you end up with is that the diagonals on the left-hand side, as you start to move back there, become slightly shorter and shorter. The ones on the front are pretty much around the same length. As you get in towards the middle, you get progressively shorter and shorter on the left-hand side, and then they come more out to about the same length once you get about halfway down and towards the end. So... It would have been hard to have those laser cut and just because I was wanting to minimize the amount of waste is why they weren't already added on to begin with and I wasn't sure exactly how I was wanting to do that glass section anyway but uh, yeah I, I don't know if I would have designed those curved root pieces with those already on. This is the extension part of the uh, Newcastle Central platform buildings, the three main parts of the Dobson train shed have something similar but I don't think they have the circular pieces on it so you know this is probably a one-time thing anyway I don't think I'm going to replicate the same look and approach anyway but uh, happy with how this has turned out and then just kind of pin it those black and so the next step I think I'm going to do is put on um, the kind of flat piece across the top of these and that would be some kind of walkway probably if it wasn't glazed it was some kind of walkway um, that would have been across the top there and then the glass pieces themselves are what is going to go onto the diagonals not sure if I'm going to do it in long sections or if I'm going to make each one of those a glazed piece and then probably just put thin strips of card over them just to look like it would have been some kind of uh, uh, steel that would have gone over the top of those glass sections to hold them in place um, but yeah, we'll see how that goes once we start to put it together. So I've been doing some work on the inside. It's maybe a little bit hard to see with it being kind of dark, but what you should be just about able to pick out is that on each of the roofing pieces there is now a very thin cross piece that can go across to indicate what would have been um, essentially rotting to kind of hold it all in place. I've shown these photos before. Try and come up and you can see that at, for each of those curved roofing pieces there's a rod that goes through. I'm hoping when it's out on the layout it'll look a little bit easier. There you go. It's just kind of dark out here in the garage right now. 
um, but it's a uh, Plastistruct 1 16th inch round rod and then they just spray it black and so that's what you then end up looking like once they're spread and then they're then just cut to length and glued in and so that's why there's kind of a little bit of a lip on each of those uh, roof pieces Let's see if we can kind of focus it there we go so uh, that's why there's a little bit of a lip so that it can rest on top of the wood walls but also to then give a little bit of a, a footing for those uh, uh, simulated rotting pieces to go across I did then look at having perpendicular pieces that would then kind of run down like that. Maybe there's one in the middle and one on either side. Um, boy, that was going to be so fiddly. These are really flexible. Um, you know, they flex a whole bunch. There's not an awful lot of strength to them. I had wanted something that was a little bit stiffer, but for 1 16th of an inch, that was probably about as good as I was going to get unless I tried to do something like brass, and then the cost of that was really going to add up because again, what I'm doing here is on one piece of the platform building, there's another three to go that would all follow the same approach. And so I am, you know, trying to balance the cost of all of this uh, with the materials. So I think I'm probably going to leave it like that because honestly, I think it would start to get too busy anyway by trying to have those perpendicular pieces and at least when it was you know inside uh, on the dining table it was a little bit lighter it did look pretty good just like that and had a little bit of variety uh, and now I'm trying to figure out how I would add lighting into that uh, I know the kind of SMD the, the the small form factor LED lighting um, and then very very thin 36 30 inch uh, 38 sorry gauge magnetic wiring and just kind of you, you take off a little bit of the painted insulation part so you've got very very thin wiring that can run through um, and I think that the plastic struck rotting would be strong enough to support those um, I think that's just going to be a secondary step um, the next couple of nights I'm going to be working on the glazing on the top part and then also trying to look at some of the guttering on this external wall and I think I will call it good for this stage of the bill put it back out into the train shed see what it looks like on the layout um, and then kind of think a little bit more about the lighting because it is going to be very involved there's going to be a lot of wiring still that I've got to try and build some kind of trunking for um, to keep the look somewhat good so that I don't just have wires now uh, now running everywhere but overall quite happy uh, with how that looks inside at least when there's a little bit more light to it and so then once I get the glazing done um, I think we'll really be starting to see the majority of this all done like I say barring figuring out putting lights in it so I kind of wanted to stop here and come in and look at one idea that I had but I think I'm actually going to take it off but it's worth showing so you can see what it looks like on the more not if it would be original but on the um, version of this extension before there was remodeling work that went on in 2000 they didn't have this kind of metal what I'm classing as being a walkway um, that ran across the top so if we kind of back up across the top of um, all of that arching on the uh, post renovation work and on the three buildings that are part of the main Dobson train shed even back in the 80s there is this kind of metal walkway that runs all the way across the top and then the glazing goes on the diagonal pieces. Trying to find a little man. One, a couple of things. One, this would be too big. I think it would be too big. Uh, if we lay him down, we we assume that he's maybe five ten average height, something like that. Um, we're looking at something that's about five and a half feet wide. I think that's probably a little bit too wide. I don't know when we stand him up. Maybe not, but it seems a little bit wide. I feel like this would be more only about four feet wide, but. The dimensions and I'm not as concerned about. It's more, um, again, back in the 80s, this extension building wouldn't have had that metal walkway on the top. It was just glazing. I'm going to try and put a photo up on the screen right now. And I knew this, but I wanted to kind of see what it was going to look like. Now that I've got a couple of other pieces, and I do have the other ones cut as well, I just haven't done um, the kind of steel wrap around them for that walkway part. Um, I think it's too much. And because this is going to be the one that you see 
uh, closest to where I do my kind of operating. If I'm then trying to look down inside, there's no lights on, but if I'm trying to look down inside, I've now taken out something that's about an inch wide that's really then obstructing my view. And I feel like if I just leave this off, and if I just put the glazing on the top instead, one, it's a little bit more prototypical to what it would have been in the 80s, and two, it's also then opening it up so that I can see inside a little bit more. So I want to at least share this so you could see uh, what a wasted evening of modeling looked like. Not wasted. It's, uh, it was, I wanted to see what it was like, but it's not going to end up on the original. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to clean up um, the wood underneath and probably do a touch of a black paint and then just put glazing over it. And uh, that, I think, will give a more prototypical look. And now I know that when I come to do the main part of the Dobson Trench Shed, those main three arches, when I'm doing the roofing part uh, not quite so wide so that this walkway piece isn't isn't quite as wide it could probably do with being oh at least probably eight to ten millimeters narrower than it is there and I think that will I think that would look pretty good Alright, so a pretty productive evening uh, here after I took off the attempts at those walkways. All of the glazing is now in. Uh, looks a little bit weird right now, and it might even be hard to see because it's so damn clear. Uh, but I am going to put a bunch of edging pieces around it so it doesn't just look super duper clear like that. Um, so at the least have edging pieces across there, and that will then run across there, just where those joins are, um, just because of how it all goes together. But I uh, used acetate sheets, which is what you would have had on uh, overhead projectors in schools and stuff like that. That was a little bit thicker uh, than some of the other sheets that I had seen around. I think they were right at 4 mil, so 0 0.004 inches. Uh, so uh, it's a little square of what it then ends up looking like. So it is pretty flexible, like the other ones I had, like if you held it up as a sheet it would kind of flop over. So these are a little bit thicker, still not quite as thick probably as I would have liked, um, but I think that's probably the best that I could do before you started getting almost into acrylic. Uh, so it was pretty easy to cut, and it does kind of bend and fall the curves okay. So these were cut into, uh, some of them were two sections long, some of them were three sections long, kind of depended on the curves. Um, overall, happy with how it turned out. The only thing that I'm not sure on is, like I said, it, it looks a little bit too clean, and so even by the time I put the edging work on, I'm um, still not sure how it's going to be. What there would have been is basically ribs, and so they would have been individual glazed pieces that were probably, oh, I don't know, in real life, somewhere between 6 and 12 inches wide. I don't know exactly what they would have been, um, but I think they would have been long, thin pans of glass. And so when I've seen uh, a lot of photos, in Newcastle was, was like many stations, um, it was all, you know, these long, thin pieces. I couldn't really draw those on uh, with some kind of permanent marker beforehand because, again, I'm going in curves and so the straight lines wouldn't have worked. It would have been kind of like the roof where I think it works because you also have like cross pieces that are kind of making up what that roofing material would have been. I think on the glazing it wouldn't have quite worked. So now we need to see, um, you know, they are somewhat hard. I can kind of press on them. These ones haven't finished gluing, but I can I can somewhat press on these pieces and they're not really flexing much. So I think if I uh, used a very small and thin steel rule uh, and a very fine pen, maybe I could draw on some glazing. I'm a little bit nervous that I would mess it up. 
Uh, so we'll see, but tomorrow night or the next couple of nights, I think I'm going to start working on some of the edging pieces, see how it looks, see if that tidies it up enough, because I also like the idea that it is so clear that you can still very, very clearly see uh, inside. So it would be so I do like that so that when I'm actually standing and operating I can do that and you know I can clean up the fingerprints that I've left and stuff like that so we'll see how it looks once I get uh, some of these edging pieces on and we'll come back and check it out then. Okay, right, so I've got the trim pieces on the glazing and it definitely looks a lot better now than it did last night when it was kind of all open and exposed. If we come down to the far end, uh, this is just with the trim pieces on. Uh, on the top piece here and on the bottom just to kind of join it up so it doesn't look too bad but what I found was it, it, it still just had too clean of a look when I was looking down through it I liked how visible everything was but then from a distance it just looked wrong so I've done about half of one side here just putting um, very thin strips the probably is about one and a half millimeter thick, maybe something like that, uh, and it's just black, uh, thin cardstock. Probably is about 90 gram wet, something like that, and so that definitely adds to it. I had looked at trying to just use a permanent marker, but because of how flexible it was, um, I think there was one of them where it had started to kind of flex in a little bit just as I touched it. Um, so this works pretty good, just uh, cut some strips, a little bit fiddly and time consuming to do it, and then just run a small little bit of glue on the back of it and it seems to, seems to turn out pretty good. So I've got a lot more to do. Like I said, it, it's not too bad once you get going, kind of get in the groove. So I'll fill up this front side, the top, and then the far side, and uh, pretty much call it done. I have also put a uh, gutter ring all the way along the front of that wall there to kind of join um, where some of that, that top brickwork is, and then the seam that I had on the bottom of the roofing. I'm uh, not going to put the downspouts on it just yet because uh, kind of the next step that I'm going to do and probably is in the next video is there's a little canopy that comes off the wall here to cover the platform so I don't want to run the downspouts all the way down because uh, that wouldn't actually be how it was um, because of that uh, canopy roofing that will be on there. A little torn, I'm, I don't know if it was originally there, I've seen a mix of photos like as this was going under construction. Um, so I need a little bit more research, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to put a canopy on it regardless, just so that it looks uh, looks a little bit better, and I think it'll look a little bit more interesting than just kind of that plan wall. I think putting the downspouts on would add to it, but I think it needs a little bit more because it's such a big plan wall otherwise. So I'm going to wrap up um, probably tomorrow night putting the rest of those uh, little strips on and then uh, get it back out into the train shed and see how it looks um, back out on the platforms itself. Uh, I have now gone ahead and finished up the rest of the roofing. All of those little uh, strips of black black cardstock have been put in place for all the ribs on that glazing. Both sides I think it does look pretty good. So there's a little bit of cleanup that I still need to do uh, to get rid of the fingerprints. I think what I'm going to do is wet until I've done uh, the rest of this. I've got the canopy to do along the front. So I think the next step uh, right around here is where there'll be a little canopy that would come down um, just kind of at the edge of the platform. And that will run most of the length of there. So I did put uh, downspouts on either side. So there's one here, there's another on the other side. Um, because the platform canopy won't go all the way to the edge. It will come within, oh, I don't know, six feet maybe, something like that, six to ten feet. Um, so I thought I would at least put the downspouts on there just to add a little bit and see if that look would work. I think it does. So the canopy is going to be that next part. 
because I'm still going to be moving it in and out and turning it around and stuff like that, I thought I would leave the glass in because I'm probably uh, I'm probably going to scuff something up anyway. Um, and then on the inside as well, uh, let's see if we can move inside. There we go. So on the inside then as well, uh, I want to start putting lights in. I have looked at some of uh, SMC LEDs, really, really small. They're, they're smaller than a match head. Um, can work on 12 volt power as well, so I can pull it off the man's bus power that runs around under the layout. <laughs> now that I know exactly which one is the, the DC bus and which is the DCC bus. Anyway, go and look at a previous video on my electrical fun there. Uh, so I'm look at, looking at putting lighting in, and I've been looking around at some of the prototype photos, and I think what I'll end up with is one of the LED lights, probably is every two or three of the roofing beams that you can see coming down there. And what I wanted to try and do is figure out a way that I could kind of hang them off those black rod pieces uh, that run kind of all the way across the actual track themselves. And uh, probably do just one over each platform, so one on the left, one on the right hand side. There wouldn't have been one like right down in the middle of hanging the tracks, so that would be a little bit pointless. Um, but looking at the prototype photos, that's, that's kind of what I'm going for. Um, be, need to be very, very thin wire to be able to do it as well. And so I am aware that lighting will definitely set this off, but I also don't want to make it too obvious that I've got wiring running everywhere. So I do need to think a little bit as to how I'm going to, how I'm going to do that, because I, I need to get a lot of wiring to run through to do all these, to do all these LEDs. So that's kind of going to be the next two things really, and that would finish this off. To be honest, once we got the canopy on that outside wall, got the LEDs in, I think it'll look pretty good. So let me know what you think as we're going through. If you got any tips or ideas on how I can uh, hide some of the wiring uh, as it would run through here, I would appreciate that as well. And hopefully I'll be back pretty soon. The weather is kind of <laughs> kind of touch and go. I was able to run out here quick before the rain came again, but now we're expecting snow so pretty cold out here but let me know anything do subscribe and follow along keep the comments coming it is always very encouraging uh, if you got any other ideas to how i can do things so thanks for watching bye bye